of God. And that'll never change. He said in the book of Malachi, For I am the Lord, I change not. Amen? I'm so thankful that we, when we look at the world that we live in that is often changing, that there's a God that we can run to that never changes. Amen? Amen. I pray and hope that you find trust in the Lord. I hope and pray that you've given your life to Him, and that you know Him as Lord and Savior. I hope that if the, the time were to come, that we were to take our last breath on this earth, or the Lord were to return, and that we could say to the Lord, I know you as Savior. I'm so thankful for a faithful God. You know, the world is filled with hurting people. We know that, don't we? Look around today. Look around the world you live in. There are people that are searching for something. But you know, the truth of the matter is there's, a, there's many churches this morning that are filled with hurting people. And they're looking for something. Some of you this morning came to church and you needed to hear that song about how God is still faithful. Because you've been struggling this week. You've been dealing with some challenges. You've been handling things that you didn't expect to handle. I'm so thankful that God is faithful. I'm so thankful that God can take the words of a song and preach a sermon through it. I'm so thankful that God loves us enough to care about where we are to give us exactly what we need. Take your Bibles, if you would, please, this morning, and go to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 25, Proverbs chapter number 25. I'm glad we serve an unchanging God. Amen. In a world filled with uncertainties, there's one thing certain. <laughs> God is still on the throne, amen? And what a blessing. He's an unchanging God. I'm so thankful the circumstances, the culture, and the crowd does not dictate who God is. He's still God. What a blessing. Amen. I'm going to read several verses to you this morning. But before I read them to you, I want to read one verse specifically. Proverbs 25, verse number 11. The Bible says that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. This morning, I want to deliver a fitly spoken message. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I do know that every one of us needs something from the Lord. Every one of us needs something. Maybe we don't realize it or maybe we don't understand that we need it. But we need something from God this morning. Maybe you're here and you realize you need something from the Lord. I said this morning to our, our adult Sunday school class, I said that the purpose of Bethel Baptist Church is to impact people to inspire people to develop a heart for the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning as the Bible is preached, as the Word of God is preached, I pray, my prayer is that you won't see me, but that you'll see God and that you'll listen to His voice in your life. I want to deliver a fitly spoken word this morning. You know, sometimes we can say the wrong thing or we can say the right thing at the wrong time and get ourselves in trouble. You know what I've learned? People don't have to let me know when I'm discouraged. How many of you have ever had somebody walk up to you and go, man, you look miserable? Isn't that encouraging? There's a reason you feel miserable, isn't there? You don't have to somebody go up to you, when you ever, ever you make a mistake, you don't need somebody to walk up to you and go, you know, you made a mistake. That's like parents when, you know, our parents when we were growing up, they would say, you want me to slap you? <laughs> sure, go ahead, you need practice. Sometimes we say the wrong, right thing at the wrong time and we get ourselves in trouble, don't we? You know, God's people can do that. You know, the Bible tells us that we can possess all the knowledge that we want to possess, but when that knowledge puffs up and becomes pride, we get ourselves in trouble. We can know all that we need to know. We can have all the right answers and we can have all the, the right information. And Well, if we don't have the right spirit, it comes out wrong, doesn't it? People in this world don't need to be told they're suffering. They don't need to be told that they've got problems. They know that. What they need to be told is a, is a fitly spoken word that can change their life. And the only word, the only message that we have is Jesus. You say, Pastor Brian, what's the, what's the, what, what kind of message are you preaching? What kind of theme are you preaching? There's one theme here. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. Jesus is the solution to all of our problems. And the Bible says here that a word fitly spoken is like apples and gold and pictures of silver. Go down with me, if you would, please, to verse number 25. 
As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. I heard a preacher preach a message one time entitled, Concentration Brings Conformity. In other words, the things we think about are the things we will do. How many of you ever... Imagine with me, if you would please, this morning. He shared this, this illustration. Imagine with me, if you would please, this morning. It's July in Georgia. So basically the direct opposite of what it is today, all right? It's July in Georgia, and it's about 105 degrees outside. And you've been outside all day long. And if you're fortunate enough to be married, and you have a wonderful wife like I do, I've been outside working, she brings you a nice cool glass of lemonade. Amen. How many like lemonade? Amen. How many like lemonade when it's hot? How many like lemonade? I'm talking the kind of lemonade where it's, it's ice cold. I mean, I like the lemonade so cold that it almost begins to form a slushy. How many know what I'm talking about? Don't act like you don't know what slushies are. They ain't for kids. I love them. Amen. How many you take your drink and stick it in the freezer trying to make it cold? How many have ever done that and forgot about it and woke up the next morning? It was a bad deal, right? You think about that ice cold lemonade on a hot, warm summer's day. Man, that lemonade with the, with the water running down the side of the glass, that sweat running down the side of the glass. How many of your mouths are watering right now? Amen. How, many, how many of you feel that, that saliva building up? You're thirsty. How many of you want a cold glass of lemonade right now? That'd be great, right? Exactly. The Bible says here in verse number 25 of Proverbs, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Our theme for the year is fresh faith. Every once in a while in our Christian life, we have to hit the refresh button, don't we? We have to hit the restart button. There have been times, how many of you work on a computer often? Would you, would you raise your hand? You work on a computer often? You have to work with a computer? How many of you ever had to hit the refresh button on a computer? The refresh button on a computer is a hammer. You have a hammer, you can refresh that computer very quickly. Sometimes those computers don't work. Sometimes you can hit the refresh button and it don't refresh. But every once in a while in our life spiritually, we have to hit the refresh button. We have to ask God to restart us, to refocus us, to help us to be faithful to Him. And God in, God in heaven needs to send us and give us in this place a fresh faith. Fresh faith does not revolve around a man, it does not revolve around a ministry, and it does not revolve around a movement. Fresh faith must revolve around the Son of God. The Bible says that Hebrews tells us that faith is looking unto Jesus, keeping our eyes on the Lord. I know in many times, in many occasions, when you look in Scripture, and often when you look around our world, you can see that there are opportunities and there are times when men and women fail us, when people fail. But friend, God never fails. God is always faithful. And no matter what you're struggling with this morning, no matter what you're going through or what you're dealing with or where you're at or how low you are, friend, there is a God that is forever faithful. And maybe it's a case where God is telling you you need to hit the refresh button on your life. He says, cold waters to a thirsty soul. I find it interesting that Solomon here, the wisest man to ever live next to the Lord Jesus Christ, makes the comparison of a thirsty soul to a far country. He says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. I'm reminded when I say those words, far country, of a story in the Gospels about the prodigal son who took all that he had and when he had wasted everything, went to the far country. There are many people in our world today, there are many times in our life when we get ourselves in trouble because we simply forget what God intends for us to do and we wander to the far country. The Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We wander to the far country. We look around in the world today and there are many people that are living in the far country. They're living in a place away from God. They're away from the Father. They're away from where they know God desires for them to be. And by the way, it doesn't take but one wrong step in the wrong direction to wind up in the far country. 
One wrong step. That's why a pastor often preaches and teaches, hey, you need to be faithful to God. You need to be faithfully serving the Lord. You need to be in the house of the Lord. You need to be right with the Lord. You need to be walking with the Lord because the moment that we begin to step in the wrong direction, we begin to head towards the far country and anyone who ever arrived at the far country never intended to get there. The Bible says that that prodigal son wasted all that he had. And when he arrived, he had nothing. Many times in our life, we waste what God has given us Amen. in the far country. Right. People often say, well, you know what? I'm going to live for God. I'll get that taken care of later. I'll get that taken care of later. I'll do that later. I'll take care of that later. I'll get that right later. I'm going to do this one more thing, and then I'm going to do that. And that day or later never comes. And we spend our time in the far country trying to find any source, any potential peace. And it never happens. The far country is a real place. It's not some imaginary place. It's not some figment of our imagination. It's not some idea. It's a place where we see many people wind up and we ourselves often journey when we get away from God. Sin is a very real thing. The goal of sin is destruction. Satan wants you to believe that you can handle sin, you can handle the moment, you can handle those circumstances. You don't need God, you can handle it on your own. And many times we're left with nothing Amen. because sin's goal is destruction. The Bible says that sin is a reproach to any people. The sin that often distracts us or detours us or comes between us and the Lord will ultimately bring destruction in our life. When you live in the far country and you think, for, you think while you're there that you can handle it and you don't need God's help, it's in those moments that you're in real danger. It's sad to see many of our people, many people in our culture, deceived by the devil. There's so many things out there to deceive us and so many things out there to trip us up and so many, so many things that confuse us and people buy into those ideas and they run off chasing them to the far country and they're left with nothing. When we arrive at the far country with nothing, we're embarrassed, we're ashamed. In those moments, we have a decision to make. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 25 that cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Even in the far country, there's good news. You see that song that they sang, those ladies sang just a moment ago about a faithful God, tells us of a God that loves us. You say, Brother Brian, of course God loves us. Look, we're in church this morning. God loved us when we weren't in church. God loved us when we had nothing to offer Him. And by the way, we still have nothing to offer Him. God loved us when we were, we were as, as often as said, when we were unlovable. In the far country, if you'll stop for just a moment and stop trying to swim on your own and stop trying to tread water and stop trying to solve your problem by yourself, if you'll stop for just a moment and listen, there's some good news. Amen. No matter where you are this morning, no matter how low you are, no matter how much you hurt, there's a God that knows. There's a God that knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with, not because He just has a knowledge of it, but because He's experienced it. There's good news for you this morning. And the Bible says that that far country is related and compared to the thirsty soul. But that good news is compared to that cold water. That cold water, the Bible says, that refreshing message that each one of us at some point in our life need to hear. I think one of the things that many times in churches become a stumbling block to reaching the community around us and the world around us is that God's people become so filled with pride and arrogancy that they believe they deserve where they are. Friend, none of us deserve anything this morning except the far country. None of us deserve anything but separation from God. None of us deserve anything this morning except dwelling in the hog pen as the Bible says that the prodigal did. None of us deserve anything this morning, but I'm so thankful this morning that there's a God in heaven who's delivered some good news if we'll simply listen to him. 
Listen, God can hit the restart button on your life. I'm so thankful this morning. This room is filled with people that God has hit the restart button on their life. This room is filled with people who are wandering in the wilderness, who are living in the far country, who are dead in trespasses and sin. And God took that which was dead and made it alive and hit the restart button on our life. And friend, if we are going to help a world today, if we're going to help a community today, we are going to help them by going to the far country and delivering some good news that will change their life as it changed our life God's changed us and God can change you I'm glad there's still hope with Jesus you say Pastor Brian look at this situation there's no hope no friend as long as God is still on the throne there is hope as long as God is still God there is hope many of us have loved ones and many of you have family members and friends that are hurting that are in need of some cold water They're in need of some good news. Can I tell you this morning that God can still redeem a life? God can still change a life. That ought to stir the heart of the Christian. You know, it it, it used to be in our life. You know, the sad thing is, is that many of us, many of us have become so accustomed to the blessing and the goodness of the Lord that we forgot what it takes to get it. We aren't blessed of the Lord because we're good. The Bible says in my life dwells no good thing. I'm not good. Somebody once said, I remember, I remember one of the first jobs I had was painting. I used to go to work with Brother Elmer. And I'm not sure how much of a, uh, a blessing it was to him as it was a ministry to him. Amen. I remember going to work and I remember there was an old black man who said to me one time, he said, I, he said how you doing? And I said, I'm doing pretty good. And he said, well, I can look at you and tell you you're not pretty. And the Bible tells me you're not good. I thought, well, that was great, man. That's a self-esteem lesson right there. Amen? He said, I can look at you and tell you're not pretty, and the Bible tells me you ain't good. We said, well, I'm doing pretty good. There are many of us who believe we've arrived at this destination. We've gotten what we've gotten because we deserve it, friend. We don't deserve anything. But one day somebody came across our path with some good news. We've forgotten Many of us as Christians have forgotten the sacrifice that someone made in our life to go to the far country. How many Sunday school teachers took and taught us the Bible when they thought we weren't listening and when we probably weren't listening? And how many preachers stood and proclaimed the message of God as we sat there distracted by so many things going on around us as some of you are this morning? Somebody went to the far country for us. Somebody came by our house and told us about Jesus or invited us to church and we sat and the word of God was open. Or a mama and daddy that loved us and cared for us and took us to church. Somebody went to the far country to bring us the good news. The Bible says at that moment our soul was thirsty. and God gave us a refreshing drink of cool water. That changed our life. You go to the New Testament. And you'll find a woman of Samaria. She said. He said I have water to drink. That you know not of. She said can I get you something to drink. And she said. He said I have water to drink. That you know not of. This morning some of you walked into church. And your soul was thirsty. Anyone ever had dry mouth. I mean you know what I'm talking about. I mean it feels like you're eating cotton. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, you just, you need something to drink. I've been trying to drink a lot of water. I've been running the whole year still. (laughs) My wife is very firm on my diet. I'm a little moody and miserable, but I feel a little healthier. I've run every day this week, and then I'll get back from running, and somebody said, drink a lot of water, drink a lot of water, drink a lot of water. So I've been drinking water. I get back from running, and my mouth is dry. It's because I'm running with my mouth open because I'm about to die. <laughs> how, many, how many of you, how many of you, you've ever seen those little things, you know, where, where you, you, you know, they, they sell these like, they sell like a workout attire or workout gear. And everybody that's always using those on those commercials look cool. You know, they run like, I don't run like that. I run like I'm about to, my lungs about to fall out of my chest, you know. I run like this. <sighs> 
And by the time I get back home, I got dry mouth and dry throat and everything else is dry and I'm sweating all over the place. And I'll take a big drink of water. And boy, that, that, that soul is soothed. That thirsty soul is soothed by that cool water. Amen. This morning, many of you may be sitting in this room or some of you may be sitting in this room and you're trying to solve all the problems in your life. You're trying to deal with all the things you're, you've got to deal with. You've got to, you've got to handle and balance all the things that are going on in your life and you're just dry for Jesus. Your soul's thirsty. I have good news for you. Jesus has water for us that we know not of. God has a refresh button. And if you'll hit it this morning, you can see God work. Don't become so prideful and arrogant to believe that I don't need that. You know, many times God speaks to us and God deals with our life. And one of the first things we want to do, one of the first things we see and we want to do in our churches is we want to, we want to say no. And I understand that, listen, we have to do business with the Lord when God is working in our life. But this morning, your heart is heavy. Maybe you begin to fade in your spiritual relationship with the Lord. Maybe your prayer life. Someone said to me this week, they were talking to me, they said, Pastor, just doesn't seem my prayers are getting through. It's hard for your prayers to get through when we're not praying. Amen. Our time with the Lord, our faithfulness to God, our service to the Lord. Do you know when we allow, when we allow anything, get this, don't miss it. When we allow anything in our life to become the source of our motivation other than Jesus Christ, when we begin to serve out of duty, when we begin to serve out of, out of opportunity, when we begin to serve for any other reason other than honoring the Lord Jesus Christ, it, it's empty. Yeah. You know what? I can tell when I've got up and preached in the flesh because I go home and I feel empty, unsatisfied, still searching for something. But when we serve because of a love for the Lord Jesus Christ, does fulfillment and joy and peace that cannot be replaced with anything else. Amen. A refresh button. There's good news. God loves you. There's good news. Not only does God love you, God died for you. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior. You can be saved today. I have good news from a far country. You'll trust Jesus Christ. God can change your eternal destiny. Christian. You can hit the refresh button this morning. Some of you need to hit the refresh button in your home, in your marriage, with your children. Some of you teenagers need to get serious once again about serving God instead of playing games. If we begin to live like and act like and behave like the world, there's a problem not only outside, there's a problem on the inside. The outside just identifies the problem on the inside. Hit the refresh button. He said, cold waters to a thirsty soul. So it's good news from a far country. He said, how do I get my life restarted? If, I had, if we had a dollar for every time, how do I fix this? How do I make this better? How do I, how do I get a hold of my child? How do, I, how do I do this? It starts with a fresh look at Jesus you see good news is the gospel the gospel is a result of the life of Christ Jesus lived came to this earth he lived he died was buried and rose again that's the gospel that's the good news it starts with a fresh look at Jesus this morning when you go home this afternoon when you look in that mirror Imagine, if you would, please, Jesus standing next to you. The Jesus that knows everything about you. The Jesus that knows what you struggle with. The Jesus that knows everything that you believe no one else knows. That Jesus. And I want you to realize that that Jesus loves you. Just hit the refresh button on your life. Cold waters to a thirsty soul. Your soul is hungry this morning. 
There's good news. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Let's pray together, may we? Lord, we love you this morning. God, we thank you that you care for us. We thank you for your goodness and your grace.